Hi creators, welcome back. If you've been experimenting with generating AI for portraits, you probably noticed how the skin can sometimes look oddly smooth, almost plastic-like. Let's zoom in on this example. Notice how her skin lacks fine details? This gives away the fact that it's AI generated. Here's another example. Generated using the FP8 version of the Flux model. If we zoom in on her face, you'll notice there are some skin details present. However, they still feel quite unnatural, making it clear this is an AI-generated image. Even with fine-tuned models like Dixowave, the skin texture can still appear slightly off. Clearly, the Flux model alone isn't enough to solve this problem. Instead, we can save GPU resources by using a Confair workflow I developed built on an SD 1.5 model. This method produces skin textures that feel far more natural and lifelike. Let's dive into some examples to show how this workflow truly transforms the results. Our goal is to replace those artificial-looking skin textures with more realistic ones, all while preserving the facial features. Here's an earlier image we uploaded into the workflow. Now compare it to the final result. Notice how the overly smooth, plastic-like skin has transformed into something rougher and more natural-looking? I also enhanced the realism by using Loretta sprinkling freckles, which adds an extra layer of authenticity. Let's look at another example. Zooming on her eyes, you can see fine details in the eyelashes, which add a realistic touch. There are also freckles on her nose, enhancing the overall authenticity of the image. And the best part? This workflow lets you customize the number of freckles to suit your preferences. Now that you've seen what this workflow can achieve, let me walk you through how to use it. You'll find the download link in the video description, so make sure to check it out. I'll start by deactivating the other node groups and keeping just the first one active. Then, I'll run the workflow to load the models. This setup is incredibly efficient because we are only using one checkpoint called Epic Photogasm. It's based on SD 1.5 and great for creating realistic skin textures. If you know of any better models, feel free to share their suggestions in the comments. On the right, you'll see two Loras loaded to enhance skin realism. The first one generates freckles, while the second one adds extra fine details to the images. All right. Let's move on to the second group. The second node group focuses on setting up the prompt for the later sampling process. First, I run the workflow. These two nodes generate prompts for the uploaded portraits, and the two words you see here act as trigger words for the LoRa's. You'll notice the generated prompt combines these trigger words into the text. I've already set up the negative prompt, so now we just need to refine the positive prompt to align the generated images more closely with the original. To do this, copy the text from the Show Any node, paste it into the positive node, and make a few adjustments. For example, position your cursor at the end of the word freckles, hold down the control key, and press the up arrow key to increase its weight. This makes generating freckles more effective. Now that the prompt is ready, let's move forward. We'll skip the optional third node group for now and jump straight into the fourth group. This node group is designed specifically for repainting your uploaded portrait to enhance its realistic details. Before starting, make sure to switch the input parameter to 2. This ensures your original portrait is set up for further processing. Just a quick note, image 1 comes from the third group we skipped earlier, so keep that in mind for context. Alright, let's run the workflow and see how the skin texture turns out. In this group, I've included two ControNet nodes to maintain the integrity of the facial features. The first ControNet is currently set to Kenny, but it should actually be line art. Let's fix that. The second control net is set to tile. Since I've updated the settings, I'll rerun the workflow for the adjustments to take effect. I've also loaded an upscale model for this step. While the skin diff detail model won't upscale the image, it does an amazing job of adding detailed skin textures. This creates a strong foundation for generating highly realistic skin during the repainting process. Let's take a moment to evaluate the quality of the skin texture. Looks fantastic. The freckles really do a great job of enhancing the realism. Now let's bypass the upscale image node to see how the skin texture looks without the skin deep detail model. Without it, the skin appears much smoother but lacks those fine details. Let's reactivate the upscale image node and rerun the workflow to compare the difference.
When we zoom in for a closer look, we can see some vertical fine lines on her face that feel quite unnatural and distracting. What's causing this? Let's go back and examine the original image. Upon zooming in, we notice that the vertical lines are indeed there, though far less pronounced than in the processed image. This kind of issue is pretty common. AI can sometimes exaggerate or introduce unnatural artifacts in skin textures. Even if vertical lines aren't present, other imperfections, like fake skin textures generated by models like Flux, can still show up. To tackle this, we need to refine the original image. That's where the third group comes into play. Let's activate it and run the workflow to see how how we can improve the skin texture. You can see how this step effectively smooths the skin and improves any lingering artifacts. Now that we've eliminated those artificial details, let's move on to the next group. First, ensure the input parameter is set to 1 in the image input switch node. Once that's done, we'll run the workflow again. Great, the vertical lines are now gone, which is a big improvement. However, there's still one minor issue to fix. After repainting, her pupils aren't as round as they were originally. Let's address that in the next group. Let me run the workflow first. If you take a look at the preview bridge node, you'll see that the left person mask node has generated a mask. This mask will act as the source area for the details we want to refine. I've disabled the background option in this node. So the mask excludes the background entirely. Along with the face and the body options, I'm also enabled here and close to enhance their details. Of course, you can customize which areas to include based on your preferences. Now, since we've noticed some issues with the eyes in the results from the previous group, let's exclude that area by painting over it in the preview bridge node. If the mouth shape also looks noticeably different from the original, we can paint over that area as well to preserve its details. Great, now let's run the workflow again. A key component of this group is the image detail transfer node, which lets us transfer skin details from the image generated in the previous group back to the original image. The image from the previous group is sharpened using the image contrast adaptive sharpening node and then imported into the source port of this node. Next, we're bringing the mask into the mask port, which shows the areas where we want to transfer details. To create a seamless transition between the eyes and the rest of the image, we apply a blur with a mask blur node. Now let's check out the final result of this group in the image compare node. You'll notice that most areas of the skin now have realistic details, while the eyes stay mostly unchanged to maintain the integrity of the facial features. That said, it's not unusual for the eyes to still show some unrealistic details. But no need to worry, we'll enhance those details through upscaling in the next group. Alright, let's run the workflow and see the magic of upscaling in action. Great, now that the final image is ready, let's zoom in and examine the quality. I can see there are quite a few freckles on her nose. To reduce them, let's lower the denoising strength in the fourth group. Now let's run the workflow again. All done, let's zoom in for a closer look. Awesome, the freckles are less noticeable now. This wraps up the entire video. I hope this workflow brings great value to your project. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.